Hey everyone, welcome to your database design video. Uh, this will be about database management systems. And because this series is over relational database design, it will be specifically relational database management systems. And we'll talk about the difference. So first, let's just talk about in general, what is a database management system? So this is often shortened to be DBMS for database management system. And relational database management system is the same thing except it starts with an R. So it'll be RDBMS. So I'm just going to write that because it's easier. Alright, so where we left off in the last video, we learned, well actually like both of the videos, we learned that a database can be used to store a ton of information. So we have this database, I just think of it like a barrel with a ton of information just piled in there. So like usernames, and like passwords, and junk, and transactions, and all this stuff is listed in here. And as you saw in the last video, it looked very similar to a spreadsheet. So what makes it different? We have all this data, now what do we do? What do we do, just look at it? No, don't be a noob. Obviously we do cool things with it, obviously. So, <laughs> I don't even know what that was about. So what we can do is we can run what's known as a query. So a query, uh, just sort of like searching our data, doing something with it, and giving us cool results. So a database management system uses our data and manages it, allowing us to view it in a human-friendly way and do cool things such as search for res uh, values, um, change the appearance of data, change the way data is stored, and so forth. So, for example, we have 6 billion users, okay, just for, just for an example. And we want to delete anyone who hasn't been active in a year. Well, without a database management system, all we have is a bunch of data. And we'd still have to go manually do all that and delete all that. So the database management system is what allows us to easily run a query, alright, select everyone who hasn't been online in a year and then we can delete everyone who uh, basically, basically just delete everyone who hasn't been ac uh, ac active in a year. Basically a relational database management system is just a subcategory of a database management system a specific kind that is designed to work with relational databases. So yeah not much of a difference there. So it's just some of the things that these database management systems can do the first one is obviously run fancy queries to give us specific results, such as uh, give us uh, all of the tra transactions that were processed before 2011, June 10th. That's something fancy we can do with a database management system. Uh, it also allows us to change the way our data is presented. That's something known as a view mechanism. So basically, a view mechanism allows us to change the surface appearance of our data. So when, when we store our values in our database, we might have it to where it's, we're going to store an ID, we're going to store a username, I'm just going to shorten these up to make it easy. We're going to store a username, we're going to store a password, we're going to store an email, and then we're going to store street address, uh, state, city, and so forth. But let's just say this is how it is for now. Here is the actual table structure for the user table. So here are all of our attributes for a user. I'm going to get rid of this so it's clear. Well, with a view mechanism, we're able to get different views of this data at the surface level. So for example, if uh, we had two people accessing this data, one, uh, let's just name him Jim, and the other one, let's just name her Jane, E, Jamie, yeah, Jim and Jamie. Let's say Jim, he doesn't really care about the emails, because all he's working on is to find out information about usernames and passwords. So what he might do is he might create a new view 
of just the username and the password. Once again, I'm just shortening these just to make things simple for illustration. I probably wouldn't put them in the database like that, unless you wanted to, but whatever. So this is a specific view. We can select the username and the password, but the internal structure of the data has not changed. This is still how it's stored within the database. Jamie, on the other hand, she cares about the ID and the email. So she creates a new view, just like that. So this, these are both called views. So the view mechanism allows us to create different views. This can be used for database administrators as well as for other applications, such as when we have a web page. We may, want only, we may only want users to be able to access their username, password, and email. But stuff such as the, uh, the date they registered, that might be all private on the database. So then we can just create a view giving them the information that they have access to. And that is a layer of security. So basically if we have a huge database for a business, well, the database adm administrator is going to have access to it all. The president of the company will probably have access to it all. But the people who are advertisers, they probably only need to know information about advertising. The, the people who monitor uh, comments on your website, they are not going to need access to the sales and the transactions. They're going to need access to the, the table for comments. That's a security feature that a view mechanism allows us to do by giving different views. So not every single person who uses the database has the privilege of creating a new view. Just because you can access the database does not mean you can do things such as update data, change the way it's structured, and so forth. That is probably something only the administrator or the owner of the business is going to be able to do. That means we can allow users on websites, they can only ask they can only access their specific username and password. They can't access everybody's username and password, only theirs. But if this guy, uh, Jim, who is hired at the company, he can access the username and password of every single user. That's a security difference, difference between the two people, not allowing the user of the website to get too much information. And at the same time, not limiting Jim to few, too little information. So that is a really good security feature. Alright, so what else? Um, a relational database management system allows us to do transactions, which we'll be talking about as the time comes. Basically a transaction is what it sounds like. It's when we do something with the data that um, for the technical terms, basically, it is either complete all the way or it doesn't work at all. If we have a multiple step thing, such as transferring money to an account, deducting that much money from the other person's account, and so forth, updating the data, boom, saved. If at any time the power goes out and the server crashes and it doesn't complete, well then the transaction is canceled, nothing is saved. That's something you can do with a relational database management system. So that's pretty much the basics of relational database management system. Uh, just in case you're not really sure of like the terms and stuff, examples of relational database management systems or just database management systems, MySQL is one. It allows us to build and run a database. Um, SQL Server is one. Basically, like the Microsoft, if you like Microsoft, it's run on the server, and then you access it. So you have Microsoft Server. Uh, we have Oracle database. We have I don't even know how to pronounce it, like PostgreSQL or something, um, and so forth. The list goes on. But basically, all of the big terms that you hear in databasing, they're referring to the relational database management system or the database management system if it's not a relational database. Don't really, don't really think 
of the database and the relational database as two separate things. They are they're used as one. But if you do want to be like conceptual about things, we have the database which stores the information and then the relational database management system which allows us to manipulate that data. When we have something such as MySQL, we don't really have a difference between these two and everything is just kind of like, okay, we use MySQL to create the data, it's stored, MySQL is kind of like all we do. The actual files, they're stored on hard drives on a server or your home computer, wherever you're running your database from. And the relational database management takes the data on the hard drive and puts that into presentable tables for people to, like the administrator, to view. Because if we have like a hard drive disk, let's just say this is a hard drive disk, and um, some of the data is going to be stored like right here. Other parts of data is going to be stored like right here, and some right here. Well, if this is a table, the relational database management system is going to be able to take that and put that in the appropriate location to make it presentable. So don't really think of it like, oh, we have a database and then a relational database management system. Just kind of think of them as one and whole in themselves. So we just have like MySQL. The other thing, finally, I know I'm kind of running long on this video. The other thing a relational database management system is going to do is it's going to create a consistency. I need a bigger piece of chalk here. Consistently, it's going to make consistency behind um, for the front end. So on a website, we could have someone put their full name in one box, and that can be stored on a database as two separate columns, first name, last name. Well, let's say if uh, we updated this and we decided to make it one column for some reason, which I don't recommend, well, the front end didn't change because the only thing that changed is the back end. With a database, we can have consistency on our front end to make our users happy, never having to worry about things changing. On the back end, the things can change. For example, the way we store dates or our time zones or our character sets. Well, that's generally, that's not going to affect the front end unless the data on here is directly affects the front end. For example, if this is a username column and we delete the username column, well, that's going to cause issues because it's not a column on the database. But basically, when we have a database, the front end is generally consistent, as well as we have um, server-side scripting languages such as PHP or whatever else. Well, that is going to hide our database an even, even step farther so basically rather than saying oh there's no username column it'll say something like error try again later something very vague so people don't understand like oh crap I can hack this guy because I know his database structure I can figure out how to mess up his website or his business or whatever so yeah that was a server-side scripting language I'm not gonna write that out because it's huge but yeah, that is the basics of relational database management system. Hopefully that was helpful, and in the next video we'll be talking about the basics of SQL, which is a language used to communicate to a relational database management system. So thank you for watching, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.